And look how beautiful this wood is. Hey guys, welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly and welcome to my table and chairs, trash to treasure. I can't wait to get this done. It's been sitting in my woodshed for probably two months <laughs> and I just haven't got to it. It's such a small little table, you'd think it would be so easy, but the legs needed to, I had to find a few washers and nuts to go on there to make it nice and sturdy, which I've done. And I need to look at the chairs. I think this one's gonna be okay, but uh, the one that I'm sitting in, I just sat down and it's like, woo, okay, something's going on there. So um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to check this out and see what I need to do to it. But so I wanna get this clean. This is a nice uh, butcher block table. So I need to flip it over, get the base all cleaned up. I'm going to spray it with black spray paint and then I'm going to paint a different color paint over that. But I want that black base instead of the white base so that I can distress back if I want to. Uh, and I'm going to sand the top and use either uh, butcher block wax I think it is or I have some hemp oil that I may use on it uh, I think it's gonna look really good once it's sanded down and cleaned up this is gonna be really nice the chairs I'm gonna do the same spray it black and then um, paint them to match the base of the table I'm hoping I can get this chair fixed because as we speak this thing is ready to, <laughs> to fall on me so anyway, let's get started with this transformation. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. You with my eyes still closed, be let come. Golden, I'll follow on golden. babies are getting so big if you've seen my one of my other videos that I have I showed you I had four new little babies well these guys are I don't even know maybe six weeks old and they're really growing big and mama's letting them out traveling around on their own acting like actual big chickens they're so sweet so sweet. I think that one might be a rooster, which I don't need, but they're still adorable right now. I'm going to try to get this to focus in. Look at all that crackle. Crazing. I don't know what they call it, but that's the old paint. I love that. It looks so cool. because I'm spray painting I like to cover up as much as this as I can with um, tape so that I don't get overspray on everything and uh, it's a lot easier to clean up if I just take a couple minutes and do this it doesn't take very long
Now my thought on having the base black spray paint is because I know the spray paint will stick really well to the white base of this table, the white paint. So I wanted it to be black so that the paint that I put over the top of it, if it were to get scuffed or scratched, that it would go down to the black paint and not the white paint. I think it would match the whole aesthetic a lot easier if something did happen like that. And uh, so that is my thinking on doing the black spray paint. I didn't bother uh, sanding down the table at all before I spray painted it. I showed you before the texture that was on there. There was enough texture to this paint that I didn't need to do any of that. So that's why I didn't do any sanding. Of course, if it was a slick surface, you'd probably want to do a little scuff sanding. I'm using this Dixie Belle Latte paint. This is a limited edition uh, paint for the fall and I absolutely love the color. It reminds me of the mushroom paint that I so totally love. That color in, I think it's folk art paint, is beautiful. This is a little bit lighter, but I really like it. I love it with the black undertone. I think it looks awesome. And in doing this, I was thinking I was going to paint my chairs this color as well so that it all matched. But I think I'm going to leave the chairs black once I get them done. And I think that's going to match perfectly. Before I flip it over and get the top done, I'm going to seal this table where I just painted. We're going to get all this sealed up. I don't think I mentioned, but I did two coats on this table of the latte paint. I let each coat dry thoroughly and the last coat, uh, I think it was the next day when I finally let it, uh, I just dried, let it dry overnight and used this Minwax Helmsman Indoor Outdoor Urethane. This is a clear satin paint, or I should say a sealer, and it uh, worked wonderfully to seal up this paint. move on and finish up the top of this butcher block I just wanted to show you the difference I cannot believe it this is what it looked like this is the before you know before I just got it I just picked it up like this on the side of the road and it's all gouged and yellowed and really nasty running just the oh I don't know 60 grit sandpaper over it and look how beautiful this wood is. I mean, I haven't even done the, the higher grit. Oh, I'll probably use, what is this one? 180, I think, is what I have left. So I'll go over that with 180, and that'll smooth this out, and it'll feel just like butter. Right now, it's got those little fibers 
uh, on there, but it's gotten up all this stuff. So I'm going to finish this, but I wanted to just show you. This is gorgeous. I mean, gorgeous. Love it. I can't believe the transformation from this to this. I brought my little table inside. I worked on this table over Labor Day weekend here in Maine and the temperatures were in the 90s. So every day that I worked on this, it was either in the shade or early morning or in the evening when it was a little bit cooler and it was just the middle of the day and I wanted to get this oiled up. I needed to get this table done so that I could get it into my booth. So I brought it inside and I'm using my hemp oil because I don't have any butcher block uh, wax. So I'm just using the hemp oil. I think it works great. I love the look of it. It gives it a nice, deep, light brown color. Um, and I, I just love it. I think it looks so good. And it only takes a few drops, really. You just saw me. I just sprinkled it on there. And I made sure I let it dry just a little bit. And I went over it again just to make sure I hit all the spots, and I think this came out beautiful. The finish on this chair out of the two is beautiful. It really is not scratched, it's just dirty, so I'm giving it a clean, but this is the one that I was sitting in that has a little bit of an issue, so I need to flip it over and check it out and see what is going on underneath. Okay, so this is what's going on with the chair. It doesn't fit in this hole anymore for some reason. I don't know if it's a buildup of um, glue or what is happening. So I have my little drill. I'm gonna try and clean out the hole a little bit with this. Going in a little bit further. All right, I got it to go all the way in as far as it's supposed to go. So now I'm going to take a whole bunch of wood glue and I'm going to put it on this part. Push that in. Clean it up. I'll have to sand around that and probably put some kind of putty or something in there, wood putty. There, we'll get that to hold on there so it'll dry. So since I've sanded it and it was smooth and now after I sprayed it, it has gotten like all these little raised areas on the, you can't really see them, but it's raised. It was smooth and now it's not. So I'm taking a little bit of sandpaper and just lightly going over it. As you can see, I've been working and it's sweaty, so it's sticking. 
but it's also distressing the chair, which is okay. Obviously, I like that. Uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to do it to this, but there we go. Nice and smooth now. But I guess it's made it's my decision for me. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to seal it so it's all sealed in nice. But I want to make sure that all these little raised areas are all sanded. and smooth to the touch. So good, so good. So got down here, I've done some sand. You can see where it came off. You can see the legs. It's a little aggressive on the sandpaper, but it's a used piece, so I thought it might not be as bad, but really it should be, should be a little less than what I'm using, but it's working and I'm not pressing down too hard. I'm letting it do the work. So it's not too bad. Now up to this point, I didn't know how I was gonna seal this in. I wasn't sure what I was going to use, but I grabbed my dark wax that I make myself and I put it on there to just like a little test spot and it works perfectly and looks so nice. So my dark wax, I've shown how to do this a, a few different times, but I use eight ounces of antique wax from Waverly, eight ounces of water, and a probably about a tablespoon or two of black paint and I mix them all together in a separate jar and I just shake it up really good when I'm ready to use it and I paint it on just like any other paint and this sealed in these chairs so good and it conditioned them it looks so nice okay so here's the difference I put my dark wax stain here and there's a line there, don't mind the dirty hands. And this is the non-stained part. So it just enriches that black color and the brown. And it almost like reconditions or rehydrates because it so, looks so dry over here. And then once you get that on, it looks so good. I mean, look how good that looks. I haven't done the front here. I did the back. But once that's done, you won't see all these streaks as much because that dark wax will fill in where it needs to and it will leave it. It will leave some of the lighter color also where it needs to. So, and also I just realized my house needs to be washed really bad. Who has time for that when you've got all this to do? Okay, hopefully you can see the difference between the two. We've got this chair I've done already. This chair I haven't done yet. You can see how dry it looks from the sanding. This one looks nice and conditioned and just ready to be sat on when it's dry, which it's pretty well dry. That's another good bonus to it as it dries quick. So let's do the seat. That looks so good. So I got the table finished, guys. What do you think? I used Dixie Bell a ch chalk mineral paint in the color Latte. It says Susan's Fall Colors. Uh, it's supposed to be limited edition, of course, because I absolutely love this color. If you've been uh, with my channel for a little while, I really love the color Mushroom in the folk art paint. So it's a beautiful brown color, maybe a little bit darker than this. But I would say that this is my new favorite. I really love it. So I'm going to have to buy another jar of it. I didn't use a lot, so just for the table. So I have quite a bit left. But this uh, is really nice paint. It levels out nicely. I was worried about the brush strokes, but it actually came out very nice. And uh, I think it's great. I think it's great. So this is the mushroom paint. It's a little bit darker, uh, but I, it's okay. It's all right. I really like it. Love how this came out. The top came out beautiful. I showed you how I sanded that down. And um, I, I just love the transformation these things uh, have once they're 
all sanded down and I just put a little hemp oil on the top and they're ready. This is ready to go to my booth, which is actually today, which is why I'm outside first thing in the morning. <laughs> I wanted to get this filmed so that I could get it in the truck and head on down the road. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some good pictures of this for you so that you can see what I've done. The chairs turned out totally awesome. I love my dark stain that I have. I was really worried about them for a little bit. Thought I would have to do something different. I was going to paint them the mushroom color as well to match, all to match, but I think the black matches pretty well. You let me know down in the comments if you think so. So anyway, I've got to get this loaded up and get to my booth and see if I can get this sold. And uh, let me know down in the comments if you like how this came out. So thanks for watching. Have a great day. in spring rainbow trout and hummingbird wing golden I'll follow the golden 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 things gold hair gold ring Thank you.